what do you think are the principles, I guess, diet nutrition wise to help a neurodivergent brain? Mm. Omega-3 fatty acids. Boom. And I really want to kind of counterbalance by saying make sure it is the oily fish. So a lot of people who are a plant-based diet will say, well, I, yeah, I'm eating my omega-3 fatty acids. And they are, but they're eating not the longer chains. They're eating the shorter chains. Okay. And so this is like a little bit of a difference. So if you are a plant-based eater, please, please, please supplement with an algae supplement. So the reason how fish get these oils in them is because they eat the algae. Amazing. And that's how it's transferred to us. You can only find EPA and DHA in oily fish. Now, many years ago, we could eat these shorter chain fatty acids that were in walnuts and chai seeds and all the plant foods that we're talking about. And what it would happen is it would easily be transferred into these longer chains. Over e evolution, we've become very lazy and we've lost the enzyme to do that. So it now shares it with the enzyme of omega-6. Wow. We as human beings, our genetic makeup, our bodies yeah. now lost that have enzyme lost an enzyme. To translate this shorter chain omega-3 fatty acids into the long one. So now it shares it with omega-6. You know, if we had a very balanced diet of omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, it'd be fine. But we don't. I think it's now a 20 to 1 ratio. It could be an 18 to 1, but I think it's a 20 to 1 ratio now. I should have checked that before I came on. But we have a very high omega-6 fatty acid diet. So our enzymes never used to, to kind of bring down this shorter chain omega-3 fatty acid okay. into the longer chain. So a lot of people will say, yeah, well, it can. It can get kind of like pulled down into these longer chain fatty acids. No, because omega-6 kind of takes that enzyme to use it. Okay. So what's really important is that if you are still eating these fantastic plant foods, you're still having an omega-3 fatty acid algae supplement because you will not be getting enough of the levels that I'm talking about that are beneficial for your brain. Do the good ones come with algae? With algae supplement, yes. So if it's got the algae supplement in it, we'll have the DHA and the EPA values. For a neurodivergent person, I want you to be having mostly DHA. So okay. do check on the back of the packet. See how much DHA is in there and see what the ratio is between EPA and DHA. Get the DHA. That's what we want for our brain health. 25% of our cellular membrane is made of this. Okay. And if you think about it, it's fluid. So it's constantly having to be kind of re-popped in. Yes. If we don't have enough of an, in our diet, you know, our brains are clever. It's like, I'll get another fat. I'm going to get cholesterol and I'm just going to shove it in there. Cholesterol is much more rigid. Okay. It's not as fluid as omega-3 okay. and the DHA. So this is why we kind of see kind of a more detrimental effect for not having enough omega-3 fatty acids. But you can just do this through fish, you through can. oily fish. That's how I would love it to be. Okay. But if you're a plant-based eater, yes. you're not going to be having any oily fish. So my two recommendations are making sure you're having an algae supplement and please make sure you're having B12 because that's essential as well. You can't be getting that either. What about so. magnesium? Oh, that's a big conversation. For neurodivergent isn't it? brains. The research I'm not so specific on just for neurodivergent brains, but everyone I believe should be taking in a magnesium supplement okay. because 70% of us are deficient within the population. Mm. And then if you're somebody who loves exercise, you're 10 to 20% more likely to be more deficient as well because exercise reduces your magnesium values. Okay. So if you're someone that goes to the gym a lot, it's really important that you are supplementing with magnesium. So for a child or an adult, actually, who is... ADHD and on the go a lot, hyperactive, very physical. Mm -hmm. It's they very calming. Yeah. yeah, so they will be losing more magnesium than the neurotypical adult mm -hmm. because they're moving more. Mm -hmm. Combined with the fact that they're ADHD, so they're probably going to be even more deficient in something calming like magnesium. Magnesium is amazing for your nerves, yeah. So I think... I would say if you are a child, getting a very good multivitamin is essential. You're basically covering every base. For an adult, you can be even more hyper-specific. Mm -hmm. Magnesium is, is really important for our nervous system and for our HPA axis, which is basically the part of your brain that controls your cortisol levels. Mm -hmm. So when we're stressed, our pituitary gland releases a hormone and it comes into this thing called the HPA axis, which then ends up with our adrenals releasing cortisol within that magnesium is the biggest cofactor okay. so if you're very um, deficient in magnesium it doesn't help kind of break the circle of the loop 
So it's really important to make sure that if you are somebody that is constantly kind of maybe more anxious or more on the go, to have magnesium is a, is a really kind of healthy benefit to add into your diet. And you can even do it by magnesium baths. You don't have to take a supplement. Mm. So you can even have like two to three magnesium baths a week because it's a different way of it becoming bioavailable to your body through the skin. 